Welcome to the Geeky Chocolate Extravaganza. We are so excited for today's topic. When we start talking to anyone about chocolates, the, the idea, the concept, the recipes always come up about candy centers. And it seems to be one of the trickiest things for many of you. It also invokes so many memories and so many ideas of the holidays that we are just so excited to welcome John Neal here. To share with us his recipes and his ideas. Um, we met actually John through our sister Connie, um, and uh, like many of you, make treats and share them at the holiday time. And Connie said, I have this friend, and he makes really great chocolates. Um, and I was kind of like, oh yeah, that's great, there's chocolates. And, like, and then I got his box of chocolates, and I was like, this guy <laughs> really knows what he's talking about. It's totally a labor of love. <laughs> yes, absolutely. How long have you been doing this? Let's see, I think we're going on six years. Six years. Yeah. And how did you get started? My mom. Your mom, okay. So my mom did it growing up every Christmas and you know, the, the friends and neighbors would rave about mom's chocolates and and just like six years ago, I was like, I wanna do that for my friends. Yeah. So I asked my mom to send me some recipes, <laughs> did that, you know, over Christmas and they all loved it. And I was like, I really enjoy this. This is like a labor of love. Yeah. And it was kind of a, a creative outlet. And so I started taking classes. Okay. I took a chocolatier class and just kind of, you know, read up on it, you know, all the time and subscribe to the newsletters and yeah. it's just become a really fun hobby. So you've taken mom's ideas but elevated them to John's ideas now, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, yeah, good. I think she would say the same. Okay, good. You've made it personal and you've made mm -hmm. it a part of you and it's so fun to share those things. Yeah, absolutely. So what are we going to be making today? So we're going to be making a buttercream. Okay. Um, and it's not a buttercream icing, right? Like correct. for like a cake. Yes, this okay. is a, a buttercream center. Okay. Uh, we're gonna be doing orange. Okay. And then raspberry. Awesome. Let's get started. Yeah. So we'll awesome. come around here and we'll talk ingredients and have some fun. Okay. okay. So uh, there's not really a pattern. Okay. For you don't have to put a certain ingredient in first. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna throw them all in. We've got four and a half cups of. Cane sugar. I don't know if it's superstitious or it's the actual sugar. Hey. But I, it has to be cane sugar for me. I, so. I think we'll stick with that. So we're just gonna pour that in. Okay. Then we've got a uh, two thirds cup of uh, corn syrup. Yep. And then we've got half a cup of whole milk. So we're not using 2%, we're no. not using skim milk. Why would we do that? We use the full <laughs> fat whole milk. Absolutely. And then we've got um, a, a cup of uh, heavy whipping cream. Got it, okay. love it. Yeah. Is it a quarter mm -hmm. teaspoon? Okay, of salt. And that looks like really good salt. I have no <laughs> idea what brand you used. But it was I... our diamond crystal kosher salt. It's a oh, favorite. Oh, the diamond. Yep. That's even better than the platinum. Yes. So, <laughs> That's I'm for glad our you got making. the best ingredients. So oftentimes when we're making candy, some people say just put it in and don't stir it. But you want to yeah. just kind of incorporate this together a little bit? There's some recipes I'll do that for. I've found okay. with the buttercreams, if I don't incorporate it all, um, sometimes the sugar will burn on one side. Oh, gotcha. Um, it but, is a lot of sugar. But like a recipe like sponge toffee, yeah, uh -huh. I, I, I put it in and I, I don't I don't mix it. Okay. And I, and I believe it's because of the crystallization. Now, um, we're gonna cover, once it starts boiling, okay. we're gonna cover it and uh, let it steam down the crystals just in case to help prevent the crystallization. And that, along with the, the, uh, the corn syrup, okay. will prevent this from crystallizing. Once it starts boiling, you don't need to stir it anymore. Okay. In fact, I'm gonna put this to the side now, it's all incorporated. Okay. Okay, so now that it's boiling, we are just gonna cover it for 30 seconds, just to steam down any potential crystals. Okay. Okay. Oh, look how pretty. Yeah, so lots, lots of steam there, so I think we're, I think we're good. Now, this is boiling lava hot, so we're gonna go to 238. Okay. Um, this is a thermometer that I trust. One recommendation I always have for thermometers is uh, you have to, they're sometimes off. Yeah. So you yeah. have to do the boiling water test okay. to see how far off it is. And how often do you personally do that? Do you do it like? Well, I've had, this is a thermometer I trust. Okay. So I know when it gets to 238, it's gonna be perfect. Okay. Now, <clears throat> sometimes I might want this, uh, the buttercream to set up a little bit more firm. Okay. So I might go to 239. Okay. If I want it a little bit looser, like if I were gonna pipe it in some molds, I might go to like 237. And that, that one degree really does sure. make a difference. Sure. If it gets to like 240 or 241, you'll notice that when we when we put it on the marble and start 
turning it and working it, it might get crumbly. Okay. We're really close to 239. We're at 238. We're gonna let it go about one degree more. And you made a good observation with the thermometer with this style that if you come looking down on it, sometimes it doesn't give you the direct, uh, the, the correct reading, right? Exactly. So you wanna come straight on right. and see where that red mercury line is. And my, I've, I've used this one so much it's kind of hard to see the lines, but I know I know where they are. It's your thermometer. You yeah, get it's to know mine. it. <laughs> exactly. It's my baby. That's right. Okay, we are there. This How do I turn? Oh, thanks. <laughs> New stove. <laughs> so it's off. So okay. I don't really have to. I'm not gonna where the where the heat is off. Okay. I'm not really too worried about hurrying and rushing it, especially where it's like hot boiling lava candy sugar. Sure. Um, so I'm gonna actually, and sometimes what I'll do is. I'll, I'll wash off my thermometer. Oh, you will? Yeah. You're so brave, look yeah. at this. Cause I like, to, I like to clean things as I go. <laughs> well, especially if I'm gonna do another batch that's a different flavor, yes. want, you know, I don't wanna, yeah. Well, Compromise the new batch. That's right? right. So, we're gonna take this over to the marble. Hey, okay. I'm so excited. This, uh, this part is fun, actually. Oh, look how pretty it is. Now, you can see it's kind of tan. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting because as you start working it, it'll turn white. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna let this sit for, I don't know, just a few minutes. You can test it every once in a while, but I like to flick it in the center. And then um, when it returns in three to five seconds, okay. then it's ready to start going. So when you say returns, just kind of covers up where you flicked it? Or, yes. okay, not yes. like I jumps at you? Yeah, <laughs> if I flick it right now, I suspect it'll stick to my finger. Oh, oh no. is that hot? Not bad. No? It's still not quite ready because it came back like in a second. Okay. But uh, it's getting there. It's nice and cool marble, so it's yes. probably gonna go kind of quick. We're gonna use something like this. Okay. This is a, I like this one because it's nice and firm, so it's not gonna, because this will get kind of stiff. Okay. And so when you start working it, um, Do you normally have like it, a pallet knife or something? I mean, or, you can. Okay. These, are, these are great though. Okay. Yeah, these are great. But what we're first gonna do is we're gonna um, put on marshmallow cream. Okay. Which we've set aside, we've got uh, two thirds a cup of marshmallow cream. It's just the yeah stuff that everyone wishes they could eat. In oh, the it's the night. so good. And when I'm making chocolates, like my five-year-old is always begging me for like yes, a spoonful of that. Yes, I agree. I feel like this brings back childhood. Yeah. When I bought it, I was like, yep. <laughs> what does the marshmallow cream do? Just, Makes it taste really good. No. <laughs> just helps with the texture or is it, okay. Yeah, it's gonna help with the, the consistency okay. and the texture. You know, a caramel's like really thick. Mm -hmm. This is gonna make it lighter and a little bit more airy. Okay, okay. So I flicked it, it's taking a little bit while, so we're just gonna put this right in the center. I don't normally have something like this. You can just eyeball it. Okay. <laughs> Do you know so, how precise it needed to be? No, that's great. And in fact, I'm gonna just go with that. Okay. So we're gonna start working it. So I just start from the edges. Okay. And this is the fun part. I say this is where the talent and experience comes in. <laughs> I love watching you do this. It's so fun. We had John come, was it Valentine's time? Yeah. But when you came and did some yeah. hands-on classes and it was so fun to see you like have that experience with people and to kind of allow them to be able to do this because it's yeah. such a lost art. It's totally therapeutic too, like to see it kind of all melt together and yeah. become one. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working this. It's kind of like taffy, really, if you've ever made taffy at home. Um, but it's not gonna, when we finish, it's not gonna have the consistency of taffy. It's gonna be lighter. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, really nice consistency. So I'm gonna incorporate all of it. So there's no separation between, you know, the, the what we had, and then the marshmallow cream. Okay. I like to just kind of play with it. <laughs> a waterfall. Know, make little ribbons and. It's beautiful. Yeah. I want to. I want to flavor it okay. before it's totally set up. So I think I'm going to separate it now, actually. Okay. So does that look about half? I think so. So. We are going to, we're gonna flavor this half with a, a half teaspoon of orange. Okay. And hopefully this doesn't run all over. If it does, that's okay, because we'll work it in. And I'm actually gonna do a little bit more. Okay. And then I'm gonna do the orange zest. Normally we do just one orange, but I'm just gonna do half. 
Okay. But, so for the raspberry, we're just gonna kind of cover it. And this is just powdered raspberry, or dried raspberries that you... Freeze dried raspberries okay. that we... Uh, blended up. Blended up and we sifted out the seeds. Which we were shocked kind of at all. like, oh, oh shoot. It's like, it's off that way. You it's we were shocked seeds. at like how many seeds yeah, are really in there. Yeah, kind of seeds. Okay, so you want to work that one? Yes, I do. Okay. So I'm going to follow I'll, your lead. And then I'll do this one. So you come around the side. Yeah. It's kind of fun if you want to make it really kind of fruity, you can add a little bit of citric acid. Um, I'm going to do just a little bit on the orange. That, that this has quite okay. a bit of acid. Okay. Yeah. So that is just like a natural like flavor enhancer, but also brings out kind of a sour note, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. Makes it nice and fruity. Yes. You have to add, I've noticed if you add, you have to add the citric acid at the end. Okay. Otherwise it won't set up. Okay. So that's not something you could put in as you were cooking it? Right. Okay. You wouldn't want to. Oh, it. I'm getting raspberry. Oh uh, yeah. It gets kind of... Am I doing this right? You're doing great. Okay. Yeah, it gets kind of tricky to incorporate it. Is there a rhyme or reason, like trying to fold it a certain amount of time, or we're just trying to get all of this goodness mixed together? Yeah, just all mixed together. Okay. Yep. I'm keep pushing it out of frame. <laughs> Okay, this is looking like a taffy. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is that good or bad? <laughs> it's bad. Uh oh. <laughs> we'll see. It's our sugar. Oh no. <laughs> we'll see. Um, no, I think we'll, we'll get we it. Let it rest for yeah, a minute? Yeah, let okay. it rest. We'll get it to turn. Okay. Okay. Man, yeah, this is looking like taffy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's great. This is so fun. <laughs> He's like, no, not great. <laughs> Okay, I have the boiling lava hot liquid. Part two. Part two. Because our first batch we decided oh. was just gonna stay was, like well, taffy, right? Yeah, I wanted to do a second batch. <laughs> you wanted to spend more time in the kitchen with us. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Which is good. We, we're grateful that something like this happens because this happens all the time. All the time. All the time. So yes. we're, we're happy to take one for the team and show you how to do it. <laughs> I will say at home, if you have like a marble slab, like a, you know, a square, yeah. I'm going to show you how I do it at home because okay. you kind of have to form a fence. This, this batch is too much volume. If you just pour it in the center, it'll go everywhere and go on your countertop. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So I always like to create a little fence okay. first. So I'm going to pretend I've got my square, right? And this is already looking better. Okay. I can tell from the very start. You've got your marble slab at home. Okay. So I'm forming a fence. And this is just gonna be a little bit cooler. That's gonna right? be cooler. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna let that set up for a second. And you're okay letting it sit in your hot pan? Yes. Okay. Yes. You know, some people make their fondant or buttercreams in the okay. pan. They just stir it and it just takes longer. Okay. If you've got a marble slab at home, it's gonna be faster. But when you're making your 30 batches. <laughs> yeah, so I've got two slabs at home. Okay. So I got two and then I Pour it, and then my other batch is already cooking. So, That's yeah. Great. Way to go. It's probably good. So, right, we're gonna let it sit until we flick it, and it takes a few seconds to okay. come back. Okay. Right. Oh, it's looking good. All right, let's go for it. Okay. So, two thirds cup of marshmallow cream. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. Okay. Um, it's what you would do at home. Yeah. Okay. See, that's more like that's more like five sixteenths. So. I love that you know this. <laughs> <laughs> it's about. Yeah, it's about that. Much. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna trust your experience yeah. here. We're gonna just go for it. And if we screw up, we'll just do another and, batch. And then we've got round three. <laughs> it's fine. This. Uh, this is gonna look like a piece of art. And this is just the freeze dried raspberries again that we put through a, like a spice grinder or a blender and just mixed all that to get a powder, sifted the seeds out. So it's just pure raspberry flavoring. And I'm just gonna kind of do a very thin layer everywhere.
Oh, look. See? Okay. <gasps> look so how different that is. It's turning. And see how it's starting to break? Yes. So, yeah. This Yay. is going to be perfect. That is so different. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's going to be super smooth and it won't be like way sticky. Like in the end, I'll be able to like. I'll be able to pick it up and make a ball. Okay. And does it get lighter in color as you uh -huh. keep going? Okay. Yeah. Gets a little bit lighter and then yeah, it's totally changing. So this is this is and I mean it's it's really a fudge recipe too. I mean okay. you could we could make a batch that's um, you know, we throw in dark chocolate in the end mm -hmm. and then you just put it in a pan and it it's, sets up like fudge. I mean fudge and Fondant and buttercreams and taffy. I mean, it's kind of all the same. All the same idea. <laughs> like very little variations, but this could absolutely, I could just put it in a pan like that, you know, put saran wrap over it and eat it the next day as fudge. Okay. Like really. That's good to know. But yeah, see how it's breaking. Yeah. So this is gonna be, yeah, this will be good. Yay! Yay! <laughs> All right, we are going to roll the rest of the centers into cute little ball size portions, well, right? You are. <laughs> I'm going to be doing that. John's going to go temper some chocolate and then Just join us for round two as we, actually maybe round three since this was round two. Oh, good point. Uh, round three where we're going to show you his technique for hand dipping, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So we've got some tempered chocolate. You preferred the good tart French vanilla, right? Yeah, it's a really kind of neutral, nicely balanced dark chocolate. It's not, you know, too bitter or too strong of notes on one side, so it pairs really nicely with the raspberry or, you know, any fruit flavor. Yeah, and it's a good yeah. crowd pleaser, so if you're not yes. overly loving dark chocolate, it kind yes. of can cater to both sides, right? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so we've, we've got our centers here, right? Awesome, yes, and <laughs> Heather did a wonderful <laughs> job rolling these. I just want to say they're perfect. <laughs> 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 I'm finding out that John is a bit of a perfectionist. I should have known in the first video when he was like, I clean up as I go and no, I make no, things no. every, but I did my best. No, they're awesome. They're perfect. Um, we know which ones he'll use. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do, what I like to do, because I like to make them really nice, I like to paint the bottom first. I did notice out of like the whole pan, there's three that he did and he went for that one. He knew so exactly sorry. where it was. <laughs> so I take a butter knife. And I'm just gonna paint the bottom. Okay. And that's a little bit. And what's the purpose of this? Because they'll leak. Oh, okay. If when the, when the chocolate solidifies, the bottom they'll they'll leak out the bottom. So now and then when I go to dip that, after the the bottom has solidified, I can get um, I can scrape off a lot of chocolate at the bottom. Okay. So I don't get the the foot. Yeah. It doesn't pool at the bottom, um, but it also won't leak. Okay. So I'm gonna take a few of these and I'm just gonna kind of paint the bottom of them. And it's not overly thick, it's just a thin layer. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a few of these. And this will, if this chocolate's tempered properly, hopefully I tempered it properly, it's gonna set up pretty fast. You normally <laughs> use a tempering machine, right? Yes. So tell me which machine you like. Uh, I use the Revolution Dose. Okay. That's two in English. Two, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing lots of volume, it's really nice. You don't have to think about it. You don't right? have to think about it. If I'm doing a small batch, yeah, I'll just do the seed method. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have to clean my tempering machine. Sure. But, but uh, you actually have two because you go through so much. Yeah, I've got two going at once. Sometimes I'll have two different kinds of chocolate because, you know, I'll use like a, a white chocolate for a decoration or yeah. something. Or yeah. if I'm doing volume, I can, and then I run out of one bowl of chocolate and the other one's ready and tempered. So yeah. smart. So I've got two different tools oh, here. Oh yes. Okay. I prefer this this fork. Two prong fork. Two prong fork. And then you've got this this circle thing here. Is this one usually designed to do like the buttercream centers or huh. okay. Yeah because sometimes what people will do is they'll you know just drop it in like that right and then You know, they'll grab it from the top like this, mm -hmm. and then they're gonna flip it over. Which gives it a little design, right? Yeah, and they just kind of do a little design, right? That's one way. Not too much of a foot. I'm gonna do one more of those. So, just kind of plop it in there. And I'm trying to pull it out so there's not too much excess chocolate, right? Because okay. I'm trying to avoid a foot. Okay. 
So, the method fork. two, the okay. fork, which is what I prefer, because I think they make a really beautiful um, top. I like the top to be really nice and smooth. So I've got the bottom, right? It's covered in chocolate. I'm just putting that in, top up. Then I flip it over. <laughs> and then I use a knife. I use a butter knife because I like to take some of the chocolate off the bottom. And remember, I put we put on that bottom coat so I can take a lot of that chocolate off. That's right? so smart. And then we're just sliding it off. And look, no foot. And then I just kind of use the back of my fork to paint down the bottom to the bottom so that there's no holes on the other side because it'll leak out if you don't have a full, if it's not fully enrolled, it'll leak out eventually. Beautiful. Which seems weird because you don't think these things would leak. No, or have enough moisture in them to leak. Yeah. Right, but it's like when the chocolate solidifies and when it's tempered chocolate, it kind of tightens up and it almost like squeezes out the yeah. fondant. It's really interesting. So, face or top down, I'm flipping it, right? And I kind of like to, I don't like to have those lines on top. Usually I do this in a tempering machine and it's just much easier. <laughs> but. See how the top is nice and shiny and beautiful? And again, I'm using the knife to take off excess, which we can. And then we're just going to, and then I'm gonna paint the back side. They are beautiful. Yeah. And that's gonna, you deliver that to a friend and they're gonna think they're, you know, they're from Seas Candies or something. Well, and aside from my misshapen uh, centers, <laughs> they look almost as if they were molded. Yeah, and then you can have fun with decorations. You know, I've got a little freeze-dried raspberry powder and if you want to decorate the top, I, I always hesitate a little bit because the shiny chocolate when it's full, per, you know, well-tempered is so beautiful, but it's kind of fun to put a, oops, that's way too much. <laughs> but it's fun to put a little bit of a, you know, decoration yeah. on top, right? Well, and it helps identify what it is if you're giving a box, yes. right? Yes, yeah, and that's that's always fun if they can. Unless you have a handmade guy that Which you're we also including. He does! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, any last tips for us newbies since we haven't had as much experience? Yeah, just have fun. And, I mean, that's cliche, right? No, but it is, no. it's supposed to be fun, right? When I am getting ready to make these for other people, how long can I store them? So I'll store mine in Tupperware. Okay. I can, I can, I've stored it for a few weeks. Okay. If you want to, if you want to be like extra fancy, because you are a chocolatier, so yeah. you can follow, follow your lead. <laughs> you can buy this acetate, okay. these acetate sheets. It's some form of plastic. I yeah. know they use them for cakes too, yeah. right? Yeah, we sell them to do like the stacked cakes. Uh -huh. yep. And you could use that same acetate sheets. Okay. Um, but it's really nice for chocolate because it makes the bottom shiny. Oh, okay. And you might say, well, that's dumb. No one looks at the bottom. But again, it's just the little things yeah. that like nice little touch to make it really but they do look at the bottom, so let's be honest. Like, yeah. It's, they, when it's so perfect. Yeah, it's, because they open yes. that box, they're like, oh, that one doesn't have a foot. And yes. then they're like, oh my gosh, I can see my face <laughs> in the <laughs> Yes. So chocolate naturally is like a mirror, right? So it's yeah. going to mimic any surface that you put it on. So even putting it on this parchment right. or something, it's going to give a little bit of texture. More, yeah, a little so, more dull. So you, but, uh, so when yeah. you're finishing with it, you finish them on I'll, acetate. I'll put them on acetate okay. just to make uh, that extra little touch of having a, a shiny bottom. This is why people love you. <laughs> shiny bottoms. Because <laughs> of, of the shiny bottoms. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, John. Thank yeah. you for sharing this. Most of all, thank you for sharing yeah. your talents and your time with us. I think this is one of those true holiday things that is we hope more people will do because it is such a fun thing and memories it are always fun. made. Absolutely. So. Yeah, and it's it's fun to do as a family too. Yeah. Just don't let the kids mess it up too much. <laughs> Or get into the beginning <laughs> part, right? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for joining us. Go home and make these. Let us know how it works for you. And don't be afraid to try the new flavors and the fun things that John shared with us today. So, My thank pleasure. you. My pleasure.